everyone, this is Ross, and today we're going to be observing three trees on my property. Just in this little area, and there's a lot to be learned here. Um, every day I'm out here, I observe the landscape, I observe the trees, I observe the plants, I see how everything's doing. Uh, a good observer is a good gardener, and Dave Wilson Nursery, the guy there, I forget his name, Tom Spellman, that's his name, he loves to recommend to home orchardists or home growers to observe your landscape and plant trees accordingly based off of those observations. And I can certainly attest, I mean, I have watched those videos numerous times. I, I love what Tom Spellman's doing for backyard growers. Um, but it never really clicked. I mean, I understood, I understood to observe your landscape. I got it, right? But I didn't, it didn't exactly click yet in my head because there's two examples very clearly right in front of me that I'm gonna show you that are exactly why you should be observing your landscape before planting trees. So this is a persimmon tree that I've talked about in numerous, numerous occasions. Um, persimmon, persimmons put out these really long, lanky growth. They don't really uh, bush out all that much um, on certain shoots. I mean, I'm going to try to really focus on getting this very bushy, but you can see up at the top as an example, you've got shoots that start from here and then go all the way up, and it's just one long shoot. They put out these really lanky arms. just really lanky growth and on top of it I don't think the root system really anchors themselves very well in the ground if they're grafted onto Virginiana rootstock or lotus rootstock I'm not sure about lotus but I know Virginiana so far from what I've seen doesn't really anchor itself very well in the ground the same thing with my dwarf apple trees here dwarf apple trees are meant to be grown in more um, you know dense plantings uh, not necessarily out in the open like I have them here you know they're meant to be um, spaced very close together they don't really grow that tall right they don't get that large they're meant to be a backyard growers thing and to be honest with you they also don't have a really strong anchoring root system because even just the wind today that's blowing maybe 10 miles an hour on an average day, I could sit here and you could watch the root system of these trees and they'll sway back and forth because the trees are, are just really not well anchored in the ground. Um, I had staked them up as young. I grafted these trees from the beginning. I planted the rootstock and grafted them. So they've been staked, you know, since they've been young, you can see here. But yet... If I take a step back, give you guys a nice little level shot. <laughs> These trees are really off on a nasty angle. Pretty much going in that direction. But really, a lot in this direction because this is exactly where the wind is blowing. And in this corridor here, are these three different trees that I wanted to show you guys. The wind affects them very, very much. and more so in certain trees than others and this is exactly what Tom Spellman was trying to to teach us is that a tree like a mulberry here which is a very vigorous tree which is you know just as old as my persimmon my persimmon and my mulberry now have been in the ground for three or four seasons now if I'm recalling correctly and the, the trunk of the mulberry is huge the, you know the persimmon is quite big for such a young tree but the mulberry is so vigorous, guys, that it doesn't really have a, you know, a problem anchoring itself in the ground. It's much more well suited to this extremely high windy environment. Um, and let me just prove it to you. I know how windy this is. You can't really tell today, but this past weekend we had a nor'easter that came in and this branch broke. I mean, I wasn't here to witness the wind break this, but I mean, that's that's pretty ridiculous. Also, these trees are being uprooted over time. The wind is just knocking them back 
every time it you know it's windy and it's you know as soon as it rains if we get a lot of rain you know I've also piled on the organic matter in this area we have things like comfrey which is going deep down in the soil and loosening up that clay that I have all that combined together is really loosening these trees up and they they need to be staked the same thing with my persimmon which we learned last year last growing season this tree two years in the ground at that point had completely fallen over <laughs> completely fallen over on the ground I came out here one morning after a, a freak storm and I thought it was the storm I didn't think it was the fact that this is just a windier location I didn't realize but this tree the trunk of the tree was on the ground <laughs> completely fallen over and of course I freaked out immediately remedied the situation by getting myself a t-post and staking this guy up and this is exactly what I've done since and the tree has gotten a bit more time to establish its roots anchor itself and I think maybe next year I could probably take out that stake the problem with the stake in the way that I did it is because it's very close to the trunk of the tree as you can see here and it's actually rubbing up against the bark of some of these branches and actually it's shaved down this branch so much that it's almost like halfway halfway the thickness now it's also done it down here and this is just not really great for the tree for the limbs so what I'm gonna do because I need to do this with the apple trees okay I need to come in here and stake these up with a heavy-duty stake I can't just use bamboo anymore these are larger trees now we need to get myself a t-post and we're gonna hammer this bad boy in the ground and we're gonna put it probably somewhere around here on the windier side and then what we're gonna do is take our tree tube here which is a very sturdy long-lasting tie and we're gonna tie each individual tree and anchor them to the t-post which will not be against the trunks of these trees um, lesson learned they're gonna be a little bit further away and kind of act as like a pendulum so that when the tree tube say the post is where my hand is and the tree tube is connected to that tree the tree will then bounce back and forth between these trees and eventually root itself I think pretty well there may be a better way to stake these guys up uh, but so far I don't exactly like the staking method of staking them up directly against the trunk as I have with the persimmon here so that's what we're gonna do today and that's uh, a really important lesson to be learned of why we should be observing our landscape before we plant our trees to be honest with you um, it's very difficult to get out here and say okay this is a windier location than something else without you know a more scientific approach but it's it, it is quite important guys and uh, this is just one lesson I think to be learned about your landscape and why we shouldn't be planting you know things that are are more susceptible to wind and uprooting than other trees like say the mulberry so that's the video guys hope you enjoyed this one hope this was all clear to you and uh, I'll see you all for the next one take care